What is up, everybody? And welcome back to Chop Talk, a show where Andre and I, we just sit here, we pick a topic, and we chop it up, we talk about it. I'm your host, Melville. That's your host, Andre. Andre, how are we doing today? I'm doing great, and we're here to talk about some Top Town Pro Wrestling. Top Talent! And today we also have a special guest on with us to review the Top Talent Show. He was there with us to take in all of the hey! excitement. The one, the only Omen fan. What's up, Is Eric? How are you doing today? Doing quite all right. It's a pretty decent day besides a little wind, but that's normal. Gotta like the shirt on the wall in the back there. <laughs> Shout out to Arrow Boy. Was at the absolutely. Uh, first top talent show there we got to see uh the omen wrestle him in a lucha libre style match what a match that was that oh was a hell of a match mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we had a great card from this show very i thought it was a pretty wonderful card overall i missed the first one and a half matches because i had to work till <laughs> till the start of the show but I, what i got to see was amazing great. <laughs> yeah, very much so but yeah no, I think honestly, Top Talent p- always puts on a hell of a card. This is what their third show we've been to. I want to say, I believe so. Yes, yeah, yeah. It'd be a- yeah, so right here, Top Talent Wrestling. I didn't. The banner's never really in a name, but I thought this was like a two dollar hot dog or something. I can't remember a two dollar steak. No, that was the last one. <laughs> no, no, that was this was one. It? Oh, I, thought I that don't was know. The last one. They don't really I, name them. We just know the next one's the Christmas special. <laughs> I thought this was like a $2 hot, a hot, something about a hot dog, but yeah, hot dog and a handshake. I, I don't know, but honestly, wonderful, wonderful show. I thought David a haircut, one toonie. Yeah. <laughs> we got to take in some of the incredible talents of the legend. That is Charlie Haas. We got introduced to dark chic. Unfortunately, uh, the guy in white there was unable to, to be um, at the show. Um, there was some, you know, confusion with the airlines, unfortunately. Go Air Canada, that's, that's failing us again. That's two shows in a row now, though. You know what? Like, at some point, we need to start show. blaming Air Canada and not just Canada at this point. Um, well, last time, I think Davey's issue was just, I think he couldn't make it, but it was that's a different story. But yeah. Regardless, let's get into the amazing show that we got to, to take in this night, starting off with uh, Coco Flash and T.Y. Jackson. T.Y. Jackson obviously is the briefcase holder and has a claim, so to speak, where, for a contract, so to speak, um, to go against Ava Lawless for her uh, top talent championship there. Man, this match was a very interesting match. I, I don't know what it was I was expecting. Um, I've never seen Coco Flash before, but these two had a very good high-impact, high-energy match that showcased both their talents very, very well. Um, Eric, what did you think about this one? Uh, honestly, I would admit, like, the fans were kind of mostly behind Coco in this match. Mm-hmm. It was pretty entertaining. Like, obviously, you have T.Y. Jackson as kind of like your heel, and you got now Coco as your new kind of babyface for the event. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he put on a really, really good show. He came out there acting completely as I would expect a face to very smiley, <laughs> very engaging with the crowd. Very interesting character. I, he made a fan out of me. I, I personally enjoyed his entrance, his gear, everything about him seemed very professional. Um, but that being said, also T.Y. Jackson, I mean, he won the briefcase for a reason there. He's a unparalleled kind of an athlete there though he's not as pretty as as coco maybe <laughs> no and that was like I'll a what see. eight person ladder match six for the briefcase it was a, mm-hmm. i think it was a six yeah but i mm-hmm. i'm very disappointed i missed this show because like this is one of the ones when we got at, at, at mm-hmm. i'm like because i've seen multiple videos of coco flash with the stuff with new as i, I got to see one recently with him and uh uh, with Harlan Abbott over in NEW, and I was like, I really, really did want to see this match, but again, I had to work till 7 p.m., and this show started at 7, and so by the time I got there, this one was already long past done, they were into the second match, so I was a little bit disappointed there. Mm-hmm. Next time, work won't get in the way. <laughs> it, 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 I hope not, but you never know. <laughs> Moving on to the second match of the night, which was quite the cluster of an of a interesting match. We had a three You can see my great editing match. skills here like, <laughs> from the original poster and then me having to add in Orion and Lil Blake because, man, that the original yeah. team, one of the original teams was not in this match. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this one kind of caught me by surprise. Um, again, I wasn't expecting to see these two. So when they when their music hit, I was kind of like, why is that like, who, who is that snitch guy with the rainbow hair and the chiclet teeth? I was like, why is he here? And then I realized that, oh, no, it's Blay. It's Blay. I know who that was. Yeah. Um, these yeah. guys, I believe they've been on tour back and forth going to uh, Mexico for training. Um, yeah. And also coming back and forth with the RCW. Um, I personally in, enjoyed their stuff, um, though I will say they definitely came in with that total heel energy, taking out uh, Riley Rose right at the start there. Um, she was down for a, a lot, a good chunk of that match after that um, one spot that she took, but he dropped her on the ring apron. And it's not surprising. Hey, Eric, what do you think of that match? <laughs> uh like you said, like having those, what is it, John Ryan and Little Blade, they come out. And when uh, Kevin Hees and Relentless Riley Rose came out, they attacked right away Riley. Like she was in, like out. <laughs> and like, but in the end, like the match was like when you had Kevin Hees with versus like, uh, what's his face? Uh, Jesse Young, like two like strong athletes based off of mm -hmm. against one each other. It was like a really good match in the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I believe um, Kevin, he's also got uh, Azrael up for a uh, suplex at one point um, in the mm, match. Yes, Shout probably. out to Kevin, he's dropping her new um, gear. You can kind of get it wherever she is going to be performing so that you can support your local wrestler. Eric's got it too. <laughs> and what a cute little anime girl she's got on there. Her gear looks just like it. So cute. Um, but yeah, um, this this match was a very. I got here for the match. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of what you saw, then, Andre? Oh, the, the few minutes that I did get to see, I was actually really impressed. Like I got it. I when I walked in, I came up to you guys. I'm looking at the ring, looking. I'm like, who the hell? Who? Because I, I noticed Cat. I noticed her, but I'm like, who's the heck that is that? Is that girl? And then I realized, oh, that's a little blade. And I felt really, really bad because I was like, I know this gentleman. I've no, I've, I've, I've actually known him for a bunch of years when he was working up with CWE and a little bit with Monster Pro years ago. Mm, okay. um, I, I, I think the guy's a phenomenal. Fan. I just didn't realize. I saw the pink and everything, and I was just, I really wasn't sure. And then I'm like, oh shit, that's Blay. And I, I really do apologize, little Blay. Because <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of this guy. I think he's, really, I think he's quite, he's quite a good talent. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was it really, really. Uh, and then, uh, and then I thought the, the end of it came was really it was uh, Azrael hitting. Was it Azrael hit the? Who won this match? I can't remember. Or Giant Orion hit Jesse with like a razor's edge. Yeah. And Blay came off the top with a senton or something and got the win. Yeah, I yeah. Was I was gonna say the team that we weren't expecting to be in the match was the team that won. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, again. Me, again. Had... Go ahead. Sorry. Eric. No, like you had even Giant Orion and Azrael do like a chop fight. That was insane. Just hearing the massive hands chop each other. Tenderize them titties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you need, uh, need a poster or a shirt saying that. <laughs> it's become a cold show, titties. man. Just two big men <laughs> slapping meat is what it was. So pretty much. <laughs> but I do got to shout out Azrael. I mean, how amazing is it to see him back in the ring after so long? But he looks so good. He's gotten in such good shape. He's come in with Jesse. He's kind of being very, very dominant, but almost silently dominant in his kind of um, entrance to top talent. I'm very excited to see what it is that he's got coming for us. Yeah, me too. Um, I really, because if you look at towards the end of his uh, PWA run, he was really getting big, but like, and I, I've had this conversation with him. He's gotten, but he got big everywhere. More or less yeah. wasn't really like sh like Relatable. toning up properly. Where now he's looking just shredded in every yeah. which way. Mm -hmm. he, he's looking just jacked as hell. Like I I think he's he's he probably in, I mean I'm at a conversation after the show. He's probably in the best shape he's been in in any mm -hmm. of his professional wrestling career right now. Um, and I think this guy's got a. He, he, I think he's got still got a good chunk of time in front of him too. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We did um, see him at the after party. Andre, did you see him at the after party? Yeah. Also, um, I did oh, tell him, you know, your gear is fitting loose, man. You got to get some new gear. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get tight. It's gotta get something to tighten it up, right? So mm -hmm. something. Yeah. So moving on to the next match of the night was a singles match where we spent most of the time trying to figure out the guy's name. <laughs> How do you not know Nasty Nate Nixon's name? Jeez. Hey, 
<laughs> we posted the video of us dancing, which Eric was featured in to the Melville Collins fan page there. Dancing to Nasty Nate's intro. We know. I, I, I love that. I love that. I love that song so much. I have that song on my phone. It's in one of my, it's in like multiple of my regular playlists. I listen to that song regularly. I, I'm obsessed with it's them, but song. I'm a huge fan of Dalton Road. I think this kid, he's like, I think only like 21, maybe he's pretty, he's, he's quite young. 21, 22, I think around there. And yeah, like he's, uh, he excels. I've been watching him since he was a kid working in monster pro wrestling and i honestly like these guys both these guys really again both are former uh monster pro wrestling guys i don't know if they had a i think they crossed over a little bit there mm-hmm. but uh both moved on to rcw and now here with top talent both and both of them i think personally both have evolved incredibly in their career dalton rogue has just become like this incredible high flyer but also great in ring technician while well, Nasty Nate Nixon has just become one of the best like pure brawlers brawler technicians in this company. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have to agree. Um, Nasty Nate was one of those people who wasn't really on my radar until I started watching RCW a little bit more um, solidly last year. And at that point in time, he was still a pretty um, solid heel over there to see him in a matter of months just market himself, say the right things, do the right things. Suddenly, he's the one of the most over faces that that company has. They, they got to work with that good thing that they have, and top talent clearly is going to do the same. But Dalton, Dalton Rogue, it's not so roguish. I don't know. As someone who plays as a rogue in the fantasy world, I'd like to see some more lock picking. I'd like to see maybe some dual wielding going on. Um, but but to to... To have the um, a couple matches that I've seen with uh, Dalton Rogue, just gotta get out of the habit of calling him Rouge because I was calling him Rouge for the whole long. <laughs> um, you know, I have to agree again. Young talent, you can tell that the heart is there. You can tell that the drive is there. I'm very excited to see what both of these guys are going to come up with. Um, Eric, what did you think about this match? It was honestly a really enjoyable match. Like everyone pretty much sang his and uh, Nasty Nate Nixon's entrance theme. And you had a, a, this is a solid, hard hitting match. Like, I have some pictures that, like, I had Nasty Nate Nixon do like a shoulder tackle to Dalton. I had like a perfect time for that. And even like Dalton just tried to do a chop to Nate, and he just Nate took off his shirt and just like absorbed all those chops Dalton was trying to throw at him. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, at one point they were they also got into a nice chop battle where I was just yelling, tenderize them titties. And I almost <laughs> feel that there was some better tenderizing of titties on this match than there was in the big meaty men match beforehand. But uh that could just be that these guys were both really trying to show up and show out for the crowd. At the end of the night, I believe it was Nasty uh, Nate who actually got the win um over Dalton. Um, but not before he did Andre in one of my personal favorite moves, which I always forget the name of, which is that German sliding out the ropes thing that Ishii yeah, always does. I, I I just call it a slide out the road German, Larry. You just kind of go under the bottom rope, grab the guy, and just slam him mm-hmm. like literally neck first mm-hmm. onto the mat. It's pretty pretty brutal, in my right. opinion. A hundred percent. And one of my, again, personal favorite moves. I actually got, I knew I could, I could recognize the setup for it. I got a really good recording of it, but unfortunately my just excitement afterwards, you got this like beastly sounding at the end of it when (laughs) he actually hit it. So I apologize again for my aggressive excitement about this move being pulled off again. One of my personal favorites. But moving on to the next match of the night. Oh, Be- before we move on, I do want to shout out uh, Rogue Energy at the bottom. Mm-hmm. You can see the the uh, link rolling across the bottom. If you go to RogueEnergy.com, uh, use yes. OLE Pods, you get ten percent off your order. And once I get rid of the banner here, you'll be able to scan the QR code. It takes you right to the site, and yeah, you see the QR code OLE Pods get ten percent off your order. But now we're going to move on to the next match. <laughs> which, of course, I had special interest in, which included Dean Richter, the Omen, G- Gabriel Lestat, and the Lion Warrior, Bobby Sharp. Man, the boobs! The boobs! Booby! Booby! <laughs> and let's just 
let's talk about the elephant in the room right now or the non-elephant in the room. How amazing does Bobby Sharp look right now? You oh. wouldn't know that the guy had oh. hip surgery. Looks a million Good. times like amazing. Mm -hmm. Best shape of his life if we're talking about it. And man, what an intro for the omen there coming out in a, a casket, a little spooky. You got some yeah. little minions there. Um, it, was, it, was, it was different. He, I, it, it felt like, and again, I don't mean to compare it completely, but very Alistair Blackish, who how he used to come out and rise up. Mm. Uh, it was more of the platform rising him up, but he was mm -hmm. surrounded by the candles and everything. So kind of mm -hmm. had that, that same kind of feel with him opening the casket and getting up out of the casket. Had that same kind of feel to Alistair Black, but I really, mm -hmm. really liked did is then something different too and he's like he's evolving the entrance evolving the character i i really like i really really did like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, let's also not like take oh go ahead eric well it's like you got the omen gabriel like your vampire for the leader of the vampire nation and it's october the event what's in october you got halloween so what a perfect way to make an entrance absolutely but let's not also take away from that third competitor, Dean Richter. I know uh, Andre is not particularly a fan. <laughs> what are you? Are you kidding me? I love Dean Richter. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're great. I will boo him. Don't get me wrong. But I I appreciate what that man can do right. in a wrestling ring. Good, good. Because I was gonna say that man. He put on a hell of a show. But man, that kick he took at one point from the omen at one point mm. looked woof. Ouchies. I I'll say I've been very impressed, like uh, Gabriel, and like since he went to Mexico, was it a few, uh, three or four years ago? He went down to Mexico to train years for a now, while. Yeah, was yeah a couple years ago, and I since he's come back, I have seen just a pure evolution in everything that Gabriel has done. Uh, the kicks are just that much crisper and and just stronger. Mm -hmm. Like his in ring has just gotten better and better. Um, I know part of that is working out with at the Top Talent Wrestling Academy and helping with that stuff there. Mm -hmm. so you're always going to get better by train by training the future. But I just and then him adding the Destino, I just absolutely love him using this. And I and I got to call, I got to scream Destino twice that night. I was so <laughs> so happy about that. And what an appropriate move that the like leader of the spooky stuff also does the Destino. Mm -hmm. So little nice little homage there. And hey, with uh, Los Ingobernables clearly taking resumes, let's uh, send them know. notes. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of this match, though, I believe it was the Omen picking up a fairly dominant win over uh, Bobby Sharp after he had to really kind of distance himself from the rest of the people. Um, we saw him throwing Dean Richter in that casket up on the stage, um, having to move him away from the ring to be able to get that pin on Bob. Mm -hmm. But then I, I believe uh, Gabriel also got tossed off the stage. And then it was yeah. followed up with a splash from Bob. I mean, these guys went mm -hmm. all out for this match. But again, the omen just showing why he's the vampire and blah, blah, blah. In the end, <laughs> Destino! Destino! It was great. Shout out to Kevin Kelly. Eric, what do you think? I don't, we, I, your, your, yearly, your name on everything social media is the Omen fan. Like, I bring <laughs> For this a solid thing reason. Like, is the, what, Thoughts, what did Eric. you think about the Omen's match? <laughs> oh, man? Like, like, gotta, like, like I said, like, you got the perfect entrance for like uh, the October tougher than two steak slash Halloween kind of supposedly themed event for the leader mm -hmm. of the Vampire Nation. Then, like, mm -hmm. like you said, with having Dean Rick getting dragged away. Well, while he was dragging him, getting dragged away, Van was biting Dean Richter's neck to just suck his blood so he get into the, the casket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, like you said, with the splash on to like off the stage from Bobby to Gabriel on the floor was another solid like wow moment. And then, like afterwards, like sportsmanship with Gabriel is amazing. Like past three matches of his, he's always been offered to do a handshake. Mm -hmm, but you can mm -hmm. see even like when Bobby raised Gabriel's hand like, in honor, like you could tell Gabriel was hurt from that match, but it was a hell of a match. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing like a good guy vampire coming out every once in a while. Blade can't be the only one. No, you gotta have multiple <laughs> vampires. Come on, more <laughs> vampires. So moving on to our next match. Took me a while to figure out who this guy uh, this guy was. We have Hey Abbott. We got the Harlan Abbott versus the Pretty Boy, Travis Williams, or the the Golden the Golden Boy. Is that what he's called? Golden Boy, yeah, Travis. Golden Boy. Boy. I, call I know him me, the Pretty me, Boy. 
Yeah, so me and Eric are more familiar with Travis being uh, he has worked at a few uh, love pro wrestling shows and me and Eric have attended. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he he I, he's from uh, British Columbia working for the NEW promotion and other and others. So, you know, not just them, but mm-hmm. and I, I have this I thought this kid is phenomenal. I think he's like 22, very su- still super early in his career, but I see so much potential in him. And mm-hmm. like going toe to toe with Harlan Abbott and keeping up with Harlan Abbott is is something like yes he's younger but Harlan Abbott has a gas tank like you wouldn't believe in a wrestling ring and honestly these two in there together I thought they were absolutely phenomenal. This is the match we weren't even spo- originally going to get because Travis yeah. was going to be in a four way, but he but with uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name not making the show. Travis got moved into here to face Harlan. I think I. I absolutely love this match. The Atlas, Atlas, the one who couldn't make it. Yeah, something like Kemmer's in, but the, yeah, the, the guy that couldn't make Atlas or mm-hmm. I mean, I, I can't remember his name, but yeah, he. I hope he comes like, but yeah, this we'll see him like, eventually, I, hopefully. great replacement. <laughs> let's say great mm-hmm. replacement for him and Travis Williams for this match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Eric, what do you think of this one? Like for me, it was like after we had the Gabriel match, yet Golden Boy Travis Williams coming out. I'm like, oh, okay, it's gonna be the the four way. So I didn't realize on social media they announced it earlier. And then I was mm-hmm. like, wait a second, Harlan Abbott's coming out for facing Travis Williams. I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, like I honestly it was a pretty solid match. Like like Andre was saying, like having Travis Williams a pretty youngster, but like he's been mm-hmm. he, he's kept up really well with Harlan throughout that whole match. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent, and these guys tore the house up. They took it all over the place, outside, inside, on the stage, up the stage, down the stage, mm-hmm. everywhere. <laughs> At the end of it, everywhere we go. Call <laughs> 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 back. Good, good, good. I like that. Don't get, like don't that. get, don't get us copyright violated, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't sound that much like him. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the end of this one, though, I believe it was Harlan Abbott who was miraculously able to pull up a pin on uh, Travis Williams here to end the match. And again, what a great match this was. Um, moving on from here, I believe it was, uh, was it the, um, Inter- the witch? We went to intermission. Come on. Oh, yes. Yeah, we needed a bathroom break. <laughs> That's when I, I got to meet Charlie Haas. And damn it, I don't have my Charlie Haas picture with me. I said I was going to hold it up during this, like when he came on, but I forgot to bring it. Ah, damn it! It's upstairs. I don't. I'm <laughs> yeah, not going to go through. Back to the triple threat the take team. After a little play in Big Orion, won. We also had the, another take team debut. Oh, oh yes, about, yes, the tattooed guy. Who were they? <laughs> I, it's the guy with the, the two bald guys. One had a mustache. I I, I don't know who and they were. And a fancy mustache. He looked like one of those fancy British fighters who would fight you with his hands like this. I'm uh, just trying to find. I have an image of their names. Okay, I was say, Eric, you brought them up. You better know who they are, dude. I, I didn't write <laughs> these down. It's my fault. <laughs> Shame. Yeah, you, 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 that, that's the one thing. You bring some up. Jake show, Craig, better... I got it. Jake Craig and Graham Park. Graham Parker and Jake Craig. Okay. It, yeah. So they debuted after the match, like essentially facing off with uh, Lil Blay and Giant Orion and running yeah. them out of the ring. Yeah. I I just we, we, apologize for forgetting about it, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, again, not. I don't know what to expect from these gentlemen. Never seen mm-hmm. them wrestle before. Uh, don't know where they come from, but they're here in. Uh, Top Talent Wrestling looking like they're going to be a new tag team for the company. But uh, but are they, though? I mean, we did see that one UFC fighter who did confront Mitch Clark at the inaugural show, and that has not yeah, also what, been followed up. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to say White Shirt, but I'm thinking... Yeah, no, 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 after no, no, but, White Shirt. Yeah, but Tanner, <laughs> Bozer, Tanner Bozer is a current contracted UFC fighter. He can't get technically involved in professional wrestling more than doing... Him. It's it's the same kind of thing that TNA had way back in the day when they had Adam Pacman Jones, where he was uh, he was there, but he couldn't actually get physical because like if you actually look at what the, Tanner Bowser did on that show, he pretty much punched him and not, and put him down. He didn't like do anything more physical than that. That's okay. the thing. So okay. yeah, but even still, how much money did they waste bringing him in to do that? When they could have actually had a worker. And 
we'll see how it goes. We'll see how these guys go. And we'll, we'll kind of see if there's any uh, kind of moving forward in that. But getting back into the wrestling, who cares about the inner match? Wrestling! <laughs> we got into the ladies' match. We had the Dark Sheik versus Ava Lawless for the Top Talent Championship. And this match was kind of a, um, was it a hardcore match or kind of anything goes? No holds match. bar slash hardcore. No holds bar. Yeah, okay. I hate um, when it, the phrase no holds barred. I don't, I disagree with what everybody <laughs> believes that match to be. No holds being barred means you can use any hold. It doesn't mean you can use a weapon. A weapon is not a hold. Ah! I mean, take it up with management. <laughs> um, so they got into yeah, this one. Is. We brought out the Dark Sheik to challenge Ava Lawless. We had doors, we had chairs, and we had a pumpkin. Let's get into this action. <laughs> Wow. Um, never did I ever think that I would be a fan of pumpkins in any capacity except for pumpkin seeds. But here we are. Um, a little pumpkin pie. Come on. Pumpkin <laughs> yeah. season. I hate pumpkin pie. <laughs> so More for me. Yeah, take it. All of it. <laughs> so getting into this match, um, Dark Sheik was someone who I had kind of briefly seen a little bit in clips and stuff on Instagram um, involving a lot more of a hardcore stuff. So I did kind of assume that this kind of match and styling was something kind of right up her alley. Um, I'd never seen Ava Lawless perform in something like this. So this was kind of going to be an introduction for myself personally um, in seeing her in this style of match. And I personally don't feel I was let down at all. Um, there was one point where um, Andre and I, we talked about this um, briefly afterwards. We saw Ava do something that we see quite a bit on, on Stardom. We mentioned it in our Stardom um, review. Um, Ava doing the, the cartwheel into, was it the power bomb in, in the corner? Yeah, Nat, Natsupoy's cartwheel into like a, a power, into a power mm -hmm. bomb for the, and then rolls into the pin. Mm -hmm. I, I thought she did it very, very well. Like I've seen like, and it, not, no slag on Ava, like, I've, like I began, I've been watching Stardom girls who like, especially Natsu Boy, who does it. That's one of her regular moves. Who does it so smoothly? Ava did it so. I, I thought so smoothly, and I don't know if it was what she was going for, but it's exactly what it looked like to me. The cart, like the flip into the, into the power bomb. I, mean, I thought it was really good. But I have seen Ava was a cut, but a year and change ago when she was part of Clandestine Society. Um, mm. or whatever the group was called at the time when they had this giant brawl with at RCW, it was just went everywhere in the building. It was kind of yeah. insane. So this is, this is probably the second time I've seen Ava do a crazy weapons hardcore match. And interesting. Yeah, I I really I when I saw this match, like I had to run to the bathroom partway through, but I got to see most of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, honestly, like I I missed the pumpkin spot, which makes me so mad. But that's the only like true thing I found, I found in this match that I missed. And I'm so pissed because I'm in the bathroom, I couldn't hold it anymore, and all I hear is them them chanting. And, and I I don't want to say what they were chanting, but they were chanting pumpkin something. And I'm like, why are they chanting pumpkin? <laughs> lady <laughs> of the night. Know. We'll say lady of the night. Pumpkin lady <laughs> of the yeah, but something yeah and. I but the entire match, I thought both these these ladies were absolutely phenomenal, and mm -hmm. like uh, it, great treat to see Dark Sheik. For, like again, I've I've seen her through online through uh, was it uh, Hood Slam and other other companies over on the West mm -hmm. Coast. I've seen her do some great stuff, and getting to see her wrestle in person, I thought wonderful treat. And getting to chat with her after the show mm -hmm. at the after party was was a wonderful treat. Just to sit down and have a conversation with her too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eric, what do you think of this match? It was honestly a really solid match. Like I said, you have like Ava the Walt Lawless, your top talent champion, which is a beautiful title, by the way. Solid mm -hmm. title at the first show. It's actually quite large and heavy title. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like I, I said, it was a really solid match. You had, you had Ava Lawless spear Dark Sheet through a, a door. Not a table, a door. <laughs> there was like what? Like, Doors, two, door. Three, Stealing two, from three, the NVR. Four. Stealing from the NVR. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you had like two or three doors. Like you had a couple chairs. Like then Andre missed out the pumpkin smash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, it was a solid match in the end. And yeah, in the end, Ava Laws retains the championship. But mm -hmm. at, afterwards, you had, of course, Mister T Y Jackson interrupt. It just ah, uh, that dude. Like he's this is what the second time he's done it now. And like yeah. 
My bet he so he's I think he was beating up on Ava. Then he sets up a table between two or uh, sorry, the uh, door between two chairs. And then off the top, here comes Sheik. Leg drops his ass through the table, and I was just like, "Yeah." That, that was a great cool. moment, yeah. And of course, at this point, it was announced that uh, who Ava would be fighting at the Christmas special happening on December 22nd, again at Midway Musical, is going to be Ava the Lawless, as Eric the called Lawless. her there. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, it's going to be Ava Lawless versus Masha Slamovich, Impact Superstar Extraordinaire. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited for this. I can't wait. I, I'm a big Ava fan, but man, I'm looking forward to seeing Masha get in there and crushing some stuff. Um, but again, as as uh, Eric mentioned, you know, Ty did feel that he needed to to get his his piece in there. He kind of got got told, and again, he slinks away with his little briefcase until the next time. Keep holding. I on really, to I really think he shouldn't have the briefcase anymore because I, I, I considered that almost a cash in that he failed at. So, in my personal opinion, well, we'll argue that with him at another show. <laughs> hey, at least he didn't slink into the ring this time. <laughs> you can see some more of my great editing skills. <laughs> So moving on to the next match, we had Larry the Lumberjack, the Colton Kelly, and the white shirt. What what is this guy's name? Is it William Kevin? Taylor? William Taylor. Why do I say that's Kevin what Eric, Eric? Let me know about that. I, I I couldn't believe I forgot that man's name. I was very mad at myself for that one. You, you should be. You've been going on about him since we saw it. I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have a white shirt on December 22nd. So, <laughs> Again, very happy to see Larry um, back in uh, wrestling. I haven't seen him in a very, very long time. Uh, he used to um, work out at the gym that I actually used to work at. So nice to see him again. Wasn't nice to see his attitude, though. He could leave that Rad's attitude somewhere else. Um, always love seeing Colton Kelly, the cutthroat that he is. His gear is just awesome. His jacket is just amazing. Shout out to Marissa who, who painted um, the, the back of his coat there. Um, and Taylor, man, we have watched him kind of evolve from this person who just got worked over by Mitch Clark in the first show to picking up the win in this match. You guys, what happened? No uh, idea. Geez. Like for me, my prediction was, was going to have cutthroat Colton Kelly destroy Lumberjack Larry Woods and White Shirt William Taylor for another great victory. But in the end, you get a surprise: White Shirt William Taylor takes the win. Yeah, I was very surprised and very happy by this because I, I again, like I said, I've been a pretty big fan of White Shirt since he showed up, getting his ass kicked by Mitch Clark, then showing up last month, having a great show. Like I, I very much enjoyed this gentleman. He his. It's a very MMA amateur wrestling base of, of wrestling of style that he has. And from the way he walks, the way he moves, I, I am, I am fairly sure this gentleman has an MMA background or a, like an amateur wrestling background. This is similar to what Mitch Clark has. And man, like just, I, I very much enjoy seeing him. And he's just, he's very, very much fun to watch. He's very intense, very, but then nothing to take away. Like Colton Kelly. I have been watching this guy since he was a kid again another one i've been watching since he was a kid and again i, I, I watched him grow up in this business i i'm friends i'm very good friends with his father and i think like he has just become one of the most entertaining pro wrestlers in the alberta independent scene today i i i i never say so much good about about him because he just he does so everything so well his intensity is there but then then you have the lumberjack larry woods who i'm a big fan of with his with his association with the rads i've been a fan of love larry for a lot of years and going back to his mpw days i've been a fan but and i think he's he's getting better and better as he goes as he gets better at being the bad guy I did find his little saw in um, move there very interesting. I hadn't seen that in in person. In uh, I've seen it online a few times, but not in person before. I had no idea what was going on for the first <laughs> three saws, and then the light bulb. 
came <laughs> on. Um, I do have to agree with you, Andre, about um, about the white shirt guy. You know, he, he has a very, I would almost say, traditional um, wrestling styling to me. He reminds me of someone out of the the eighties with his almost technical traditional wrestling. And I'm I'm loving it. I'm a big fan of that styling. It, it's almost like what tr um, technical wrestling has kind of evolved into today. Um, I really, really like it. I'm a big fan also. I'm looking forward to see what he has to offer going forward, especially with this win. This sets him up for maybe a bit, bit bigger of a, a fish at top talent. Maybe we can revisit yeah, him taking on Mitch Clark again. Yeah, I think it, 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 it's nothing, I think, but a pure step up for him. So, like, mm -hmm. it, it's only going to put him in a higher position and facing, I, I again, I, there, I would love to see him work with Nate. I would love to see him work with Dalton. I would love to see him work with Gabriel, Dean. Like, uh, there's so many. I, I would love to see him work with pretty much everybody in this company. So, just yeah. please, him versus Ava, I think, would be a phenomenal match. So, like, so more, 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 more white shirt. More white shirt, and I promise, William, I will be wearing a white shirt on December 22nd for your match. <laughs> awesome. Well, moving on from this triple threat match into the next, uh, I believe it was the, the main event, was it not? Yes, yes. it was. Um, main event. What a match to be able to, to have the privilege of seeing Charlie Haas versus Mitch Clark. There, there are almost no words to describe the perfection that was the first at least five minutes of this mm. match. They were just almost purely technical. And if you've been listening to anything that Andre and I say on Purasu Review, you will know we love our technical wrestling. We love seeing that education. We love seeing those smart limbs. This match was just... It was like I was watching Charlie Haas from 10, 15 years ago. You wouldn't know that he is the age he is. You wouldn't know that Mitch and him weren't the same age. They kept up with each other so well that I, I can't praise this match enough. This was the perfect way for them to end the night. Oh, for sure. I, I am a huge fan of Charlie Haas going back to his Team Angle days. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, he's – he again, he has – Mitch Clark is a is a pure a pure wrestler slash MMA fighter. Like he has a very ground based attack. It's ground based style. He he relies a lot on his wrestling and his 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 submissions, his kicking game, like the stuff he has perfected over the years he, that he used in UFC that he was that he had in his collegiate career. That is what he has always relied on, and it's just made him better and better. And I again, I'm a huge fan of this gentleman. But like Charlie showing just like I think he's again late 40s maybe maybe early 50s i don't know at this point but he's been around for a long time and he he showed why he can keep up with somebody like mitch clark and why he's still good and i i really appreciate the mat wrestling the crowd i'll i'll, I'll say this was quiet but again not everybody can appreciate the the kind of style that they put out i know we do but not ever, ever a lot of people want so maybe that matchup wasn't for everybody but i think everybody mm -hmm. appreciated what they saw it just mm -hmm. uh, you and me eric uh, cody we were cheering but mm -hmm. a lot of the crowd were sitting on their hands but again that's that's that style doesn't lend well to people getting crazy and excited but for those of us that truly appreciate this stuff we get mm -hmm. very excited for it hundred percent. And that's something that I have actually noticed, particularly over the COVID time, is that the Edmonton crowd and the Calgary crowd have become a little bit not difficult to please, but it is difficult to get them to make noise. It's not to say that we aren't being entertained, it, it, but it is to say that it is difficult to get us to make noise now. And that I really hope that the, the wrestlers themselves don't take that very personally because it, it doesn't say anything about their work per se. It's just no. that the crowd is just not particularly vocal. Eric, what did you think about this match? Uh, it was like a pretty solid match. It was my, actually my first time probably seeing Charlie Haas. Because, mm -hmm. Andre, you said he was part of Kurt 
team what year was that like maybe uh, 2002 2003 <laughs> 2004 area yeah a lot i think when you were still a baby you know like when you were still, still in high in school <laughs> I was just entering high. I was like early high school when when he when he got, he debuted. I was like grade nine or ten. So like Eric, you would have been a baby at at, at oldest. Oh. So again, I understand for you. Again, and if you didn't grow up with Charlie Haas, I get it. But you got to admit, he was very very good in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100 percent. Like I'm even trying to figure out, like what era, like what matches I should probably see if he's like on any WrestleManias. I'll I'll send you a list. Don't worry. Oh, I have quite a few. We're like Jericho. We got watch. lists. <laughs> <laughs> so no, overall, like said, it's a pretty solid match. Yeah, awesome. Overall, I felt the show was very, very solid. Um, going based on the shows coming off of the shows in the past, you know, these this company has put on a very consistent high entertainment, high quality show. And we can expect them to keep putting on the shows going forward. Obviously, we mentioned that Masha right Slamovic is going to be here. Yeah, but then they also announced Impact Champion Josh Alexander is going to be coming to the December 22nd show. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's going to be not phenomenal. one, but two Impact um, people on on one so show. My 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 question is, who's the guy on the left? Because I'm pretty sure it's not the same guy that's facing Gabe that I have a card for. I'm still trying to figure out who the guy on the left is. Yeah, I I can't. I saw his name earlier. I, I'm sorry, it's slipping me right now. I do know that he is. Um, I believe a hardcore slash slash deathmatch kind of oh um wrestler. UCW. I'm gonna guess then. I, I I don't really know. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna find out and probably get back to you guys on that when we start to get a little bit closer to the show. We do have two months to kind of figure out who this guy is, but then we have, um, the Omen Gabriel facing off against Vinny Massaro. Um, I don't know a lot about Vinny Massaro. I know he was Me on, either. um, Lucha Underground for some time. Um, his Instagram right now, um, says that he is a, uh, pizza eater and video game player and it, then it, I can see it. I, I can definitely see it. So this will be, um, I think, an interesting match. He does also <laughs> have... Um, His Twitter says he's the grandmaster of Sicilian Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> and the founder I of the mean, CIA. He's going to be hitting the omen with his sausage. I might have a problem with that. He's um, the, hold on. Hold on. Hold on I, got, I got another one. He's the founder of the CIA, the certified Italian assassins. Hashtag snug life. <laughs> They're wrong. Not making fun of the guy. I I love it. I love it. <laughs> Lord help us. Um, <laughs> you know what? We got two months to figure out who this guy is, and and uh, Omen's got two months to antagonize him. So I look forward to seeing what they come up with. And also, as I mentioned, Master Slamovic is going to be taking on Ava Lawless. This is going to be incredible masha is one of those unmatched powerhouses in impact wrestling i can't wait to see this match ava's gonna have her money cut out for her she's gonna have to work really really hard to hang on to that title going forward i don't think that this is for the title but with ty lurking in the shadows with that briefcase man even in a, yeah, gotta watch her back even in a non-title if even if she loses or wins against match she's going to be tired as mm -hmm. heck and T.Y. could capitalize on that. Absolutely. Eric, you looking forward to this one? Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm really looking for the Nasha of Slamovich versus Ava Law. This is going to be a hell of a match. And, like, mm -hmm. on, we're trying to figure out this Japanese guy, the Japanese headband guy. I'm going to mm -hmm. maybe do a prediction. I'm going to say, since we kind of did a little research, he's the kind of like hardcore like match guy. I'm going to say mm -hmm. he might be facing Cutthroat Colton Kelly. And oh, please, and please give us that tough talent wrestling. <laughs> oh, yes, hashtag please. yes, cutthroat. Yes, that would be amazing. I would love to see that. I would splurge mm. for the VIP on that. Me too. Just putting for that, that I would. I would splurge 100%. on that. But that could be a main, heck of a match. But what <laughs> looks to be our main event of the evening is going to be Impact Wrestling Champion Josh Alexander taking on. The the man who used to be used to be a very heavy metal Harlan Abbott. Hey Abbott. Um, did we did didn't um 
I feel like this is a little deja vu. Did we not already see Josh Alexander against heavy metal in RCW recently? It's very possible. Um, I saw him. I I I don't think I attended that show. I was at mm-hmm. a show out of town that I ring announced where it was Josh Alexander facing Michael Richard Blaze, who was the uh, RCW Canadian champion at the time. And I think he did face Harlan's old persona of heavy metal mm-hmm. uh, uh, at the ch- show the night after. I didn't get to see it personally because I didn't so make it, but yeah. Yeah, we know how heavy matter. Sorry, how Harlan Abbott is able to perform, and we we know we know what Josh Alexander is capable of mm-hmm. doing. Um, this is going to be a banger of a match, Eric. What do you think? Well, like, like you say, Harlan has been doing amazing since doing this new gimmick as Harlan Abbott, and mm-hmm. like I'm looking forward to seeing all these new competitors. Like I've never seen Josh Alexander, never seen Nasha Slavovich, so it's gonna be fun seeing all these new wrestlers who I've never seen before. That's my eight by ten wrestling autographs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Eric, and that's why we support local wrestling, right? To be introduced Absolutely. to new wrestlers. Yeah, so I, that's, that's what wrestling's for. Yeah, exactly. Introducing us to new wrestlers like Kefon Heast. <laughs> so that sounds like it brings us to the end of our top talent review, and thus the end of our chop talk. If you're interested in seeing um, the Top Talent show in December, you can uh, go to their website, their Facebook. We will put those links in the description box down below. Um, you have a, a direct link to uh, tickets for uh, for them there. Um, also, don't forget to check out Rogue Energy Drink. They are vegan. They are yummy. We think we're going to get our Shirakawa special coming soon. I checked it this morning. It just crossed the Canadian border. We're almost there, you guys. <laughs> but if you uh, scan the QR code down there when the banner is gone and use the uh, the discount code OLE Pods, you can get 10% off of your order of Rogue Energy Drink there. Oh, and also, <laughs> go ahead, Andre. Oh, just wanted to. I, I no, I just going to mention someone we're going to talk about. You got everything, so <laughs> <laughs> we also cannot forget over there because I'm not knowing where. They, don't forget to check out our good friend Mike the Ref at Backbreaker Video, where he uploads all of our videos as well as his AEW sidecast videos, video gaming videos. Go check out what it is that he's watching. I guarantee you, it is worth watching. Also. Definitely. And without definitely. further ado, I am your Melball. That is your Andre. And this is the Omen fan, Eric. We will see you next time. Adios. Peace out.